Hi, my name is Lars Christensen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply Toolpath to this part from start to finish of Fusion 360. So we're going to start out by going from the model space to the CAM workspace within Fusion 360. Now, the first thing you always have to do is you have to create a setup. This is where we're going to tell the software where X and Y and Z is out at our machine. See, out of the machine is pretty straightforward what is up and down. But when it comes to a CAM software, there's a little bit more flexibility. See, you will get files from designers and engineers where they model things that you will not agree are up and down or top or front. So start from the top and work our way down. The first checkbox is what type of operation it is. And we can just leave that because this is a milling operation. The next is where we're going to define that X, Y, and Z or the work coordinate system. And you will see that we kind of like have a triad that represents that here on the screen. Now, if you click the drop down, you will see that there's a lot of options in the drop down in here. But honestly, I only use one. The first one right here, select Z axis and the X axis. So click on that one and you get kind of like two areas you can put in. You can put the, C, the Z axis or you can put in the X axis. Now you will see that the Z axis here is already compressed. The Z axis will flip the blue Z axis over here. Now there is a simple rule for this. If you click a face or a plane, that axis will go perpendicular to that face or plane. If you select an edge, then the axis will go along that one. So with the Z axis compressed right now, being like blue, if I hover over, you will see that when I click on this, that the Z axis will jump and be uh, perpendicular to that face. So you see that right there. Now, if we wanted to, we could also change the X and the Y. So the X axis right now is compressed in. Now, if I wanted to, I could select a face and it will go perpendicular to that face, or I could select an edge and it will go along that. So if I select this edge, you will see that the X axis in red is gonna flip in that direction. Now I can again go back and click over here. I can hit the red X to take it away and it will jump back to where it is. So this is probably the hardest thing when it comes to using CAM with Infusion 360. So the rule is simple. You click a face or plane and the axis will go perpendicular to this. You click an X and it will go along it. So that's all you really need to, uh, to know about. Now below here we have stock point. If I click on that, you will see we get these small snowballs that appear on our model. And this is really where we're going to define where we're going to pick up the part out of the machine. Now, if you are a die maker, you might like to select an edge. So you can place an X here and it will step to wherever snowball you click on here. Now, if you are a mold maker, you might want to select the center of the part. That's why I'm going to leave mine right now. So imagine that we're standing out in front of the machine and I used an indicator to tram in the part and I'm standing right on top of it with the X and the Y and the Z X is going, going up and down. The next tab is where we can define our stock. Now by default, it goes to relative size box, which means that the software have kind of like placed this box around the model. Now you can add a little bit of extra stock in here. But I also want you to be aware that there's other options in here. There's, for example, fixed size box. This one here is great if you have the stock in your hand and you can actually measure it and input the, the, the numbers. And there is also an option in here that is called from solid. You can actually model up all your stock uh, inside of Fusion 360 and then use it as your stock for simulation. This is great if you have like castings and things like that. I'm gonna switch it back to relative size box and make sure that there's a little bit of extra stock added to the sides and to the top. This is really all we need to, uh, to create this setup. So now we are ready to apply our first tool path. Now for this part here, we're actually gonna be switching between two and a half axis 
and a free access toolpath. So you will see how easy it is to jump back and forth between the two. I'm going to start out with a standard 2D facing operation. It's a pretty standard one. And I click on that and you will see the menu opens over here. Now, a couple of things that I need to, to highlight. First of all, you see these five tabs over here. They will always be have the same function and be in the same order no matter what toolpath you're in. And that also goes for turning and it goes for like five axes. So it's easy to remember what each tab does because they're all in the same order. They have the same functions. Now the first tab is always where you select your tool. So just like as if you're out on the shop floor, you kind of like have your part, your stock. The next thing you will do is you will try to find some tooling. So I'm going to click select tool and it will open up the tool library. Now there's a lot of different tools in here. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and down here there is a tutorial folder that is for ins and I'm going to click on that. And most shops would have some kind of like a face mill or a big insert cutter to face off the part. But just for this example, to kind of keep our tooling limited down to a smaller amount, I'm just going to select a half inch flat end mill for this and hit OK. Now you will also see that we can put in our feeds and speeds in here. We'll come back to feeds and speeds uh, a little bit later. So the first tab is the tool. The second tab is our geometry. Now, when I click on that, you will see on the screen that Fusion 360 puts an orange boundary box around our part. So the software is smart enough to know that we are in a facing operation and it says, well, you probably just want to face off the entire part. Now, we're going to come back to this boundary box a little bit later and change it. But for right now, let's just hit OK. And just like that, we have our first operation created. We can always go up here to the simulate button and we can go ahead and we can simulate uh, the tool path, really giving us a view into the future uh, to see what's going to happen uh, when we click out on, uh, on the, green uh, the green cycle start out on the machine. So this was a 2D facing operation. The next toolpath I'm going to go and use is a 3D adaptive clearing. So I'm going to click on that. And again, you will see the five tabs are the same. And again, as before, the first tab is our tool. Now you will see that it remembers the previous tool that was selected. So we actually OK with that. And like I said before, feeds and speeds, That's we're going to come to that later. Now, many times when I'm programming things inside of Fusion 360, I just select my operation, I select my tool, and then I just go and hit OK to see what the software will give me. Instead of going in and make like a ton of different changes and then have to go through afterwards and kind of figuring it out, it's a lot easier to just select your tool, hit OK, and see what the software gives you. Now, one thing I see here is that in this case, the tool is actually machining all the way to the bottom of the part. Now, I was kind of planning on holding this part in a vise. So I don't want to machine it all the way down there. Now, to edit that, let's go back over to the operation, right click and select edit part. So the first tab was our tool. The second tab was our geometry. The third tab is where we can select our heights. Down at the bottom here, you will see that the tool is going to the model bottom, but I can actually just add an offset right in here. So, so I was planning on holding on to a half an inch, and then I'm just going to add another 100,000 just for kind of like safety. So you can see how we can actually do math right inside of these dialog boxes. The fourth tab is the passes tab. That has everything to do with the cutter engaged with the material. There's a couple of things I want you to be aware of in here. First of all, this adaptive tool path is really a tool path that will analyze the stock that we specified and the model that we have on the screen. And then it will calculate a constant step over for the tool. So what we can actually do in here, we can actually machine with the full flute length of the cutter. 
So finally utilizing the whole fruit length that you actually paid for. Now with that, we can then control how much uh, load we want to put on the side of the cutter. Now this here is by default 200 thousands. I'm planning on machining this part in something like 6061 aluminum. So 200 thousands on like a Haas VF2 is probably pretty close to what we want. But if you want to be conservative, let's change it to a hundred thousands. Also, notice how there is a stock to leave down here. So we are leaving some material for a finishing cut. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And let's take a look at what we got. Now, if you have never used Adaptive before, one of the ways to check this is to go in and simulate. So I'm going to click on Setup 1, what means that we're now selecting both our facing and our adaptive. And I'm going to go back over to the Simulate tool. But this time, you will see, first of all, that we have a lot of blue lines on the screen. We can go over here to the mode, and we can change that to tail. Second of all, we can also turn on stock, which is a really great way to visualize what's going to happen out of the machine. So I'm going to hit play, and we'll see that we're going to get our facing operation. Let me just speed it up down in the slider down here a little bit. So there's our facing operation. And then you will see the adaptive clearing that's going to keep a constant load on the cutter, kind of like side milling its way through this part. Now, adaptive clearing is smart enough to know the size of the tool versus the part. So you will see that this clover section up here was not cut because the end mill is simply too big. So let's take care of that. I'm going to close out of the simulation. And for this, let's go and explore the 2D adaptive clearing. Click on that. And again, you will see that the tool is the first tab that comes up here. So I'm going to go into the tool library. I'm going to go back down to our tutorial inch. And this time, I'm going to select a quarter inch flat end mill and hit OK. Now, the second tab is the geometry. And I'm going to make sure that I select that inner edge of uh, the clover here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, if we zoom in a little, you will see that we get a very unified cutting path down at the bottom. And you will also see that we are entering the stock with a helix. Now, here's a neat thing. If we go back in and edit this 2D adaptive by right clicking and hit edit, and we go to the last tab, this is where we control all our lead ins and leads out. You will see down we have a ramp taper angle. If I'm changing this to 10 and hitting OK, you will see that we now get a cone shaped helix. This will put a lot less stress on the Z axis on your machine and simply just a better way to enter the part. Now, I want to get back to that facing operation we had in the beginning. Now where we have removed all this material, one could argue that this facing operation really only need to establish a, a smaller surface. At any point, we can take an operation over here and we can drag and drop it down on the order. So now our facing operation is the last operation down here. And then we can right click, go in and hit edit. And if we go to the geometry tab, we can actually select an edge and confine it within that area. So now let's hit OK. Go back and hit Setup. So we select all our different operations. Hit the Simulate button. And if we want to fast forward to the facing operation, we can literally just go and click on it in the tree. And you'll see the software will fast right to that moment. And if we now hit Play, we can see what we got. Now, you see how a little bit of a tab is left over here. Now, Fusion 360 is absolutely easy to program, but it also has all the functions that you would expect an advanced CAM system to have. So let's close out of the simulation, go back into the facing operation by right-clicking and select Edit, and then go over to the Passes tab, and we can do a stock offset of a hundred thousands.
Now let's go back and hit setup, hit simulation, fast forward by selecting the facing operation, and then hit play again. That should do it. Now going back from a 2D to a 3D toolpath, I want to introduce you to a toolpath called horizontal. Now when we're talking 3D toolpath, many times we're thinking of 3D surfaces that has curves on it, but the truth is that most of the times there's also flat spots within those areas. That's where this toolpath shines. So I'm gonna select that, and this time I'm gonna go over and select that quarter inch end mill we had before. Hit OK. Feeds and speeds are for later. I'm gonna to go to our selection tab in here and then where it says machine boundary, I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna hit selection and select boundaries that we want that horizontal to work within. Now you will see that there's a con tool containment over here and I'm gonna change it to tool center of boundary. What means that I'm telling the tool that I want it to stay on the line of our boundary, but by adding an extra hundred thousands, I'm telling the software that it's allowed to travel outside to go in and enter the pot from the outside. Now again, at any time we can click setup, we can hit simulate and we can fast forward to that operation. Now going from the three axis horizontal, I'm gonna jump back and use the 2D pocket to finish the clover and also finish the two open pockets at each end. I'm gonna leave it at the quarter inch flat end mill. I'm gonna to go to the geometry tab and I'm gonna select the inside of the clover and I'm gonna select right here on the edge of the two pockets. Now notice, how the pocket is also taking our stock into consideration. I'm gonna go over on the passes tab and make sure that we turn on finishing tool path just to make sure that we get one cleanup pass in there. And also, since this is gonna be a finishing operation, I'm gonna turn off stock to leave and hit okay. Now I noticed that on the clover, we're actually getting another helix. But since we already roughed this out with a 2D adaptive, we can save some machining time by going over right click. And if you remember, the last tab have everything to do with lead in, lead out. And we can change the helix to a plunge and hit OK. Now again, as you're programming inside of Fusion 360, I will always recommend that you go and take a look at the future and this way here, we can always go and keep an eye on the different tool paths we got and see that we're getting close to have this part completely programmed. Now we're almost there. Let's apply some tool paths to this cone shape. For this, I'm gonna go use a 3D contour toolpath. Now, since this is a cone shape surface machining, we're gonna go and select a ball end mill. I'm gonna go down to our tutorial library and I'm gonna select a quarter inch ball and hit okay. Now, since we have some material left over from our roughing operation, I'm gonna make this a semi finishing operation. So first, I'm gonna go in to our geometry, and just like we did with the horizontal tool path, I'm gonna go in and hit selection, and I'm gonna select our boundary we want the tool to work within. I'm also gonna turn on contact point boundary. This here will make sure that there's a contact point that is tangent to our cutter. Now you can always hover over one of these boxes, and this pop-up will show up where you can read more about it. Now we go into the passes tab. 
Since this is going to be a semi-finished rough, I'm going to go and make sure that I turn stock to leave on. And I'm going to just leave 10 thousands in here for our finishing cut. Now, I will also leave the maximum step down at 40 thousands and hit OK. Now, when it comes to 3D tool paths, there's always two factors. There's surface finish, and then there's time. Time equals money, right? So, the smaller step you're making, the finer surface you get, but also the longer the cycle's gonna take. So, let's go in and get our feeds and speeds right so we can make an educated decision on the step over for our surface finish. We can always access our tools by going up to the Tool Library Manager up here. And to edit our feeds and speeds, I'm going to right click on our half inch flat end mill, select Edit Tool, and go to the Feeds and Speeds tab. Now, feeds and speeds really depend on what kind of tooling and what machine you have, so you have to use your best judgment. But I'm going to machine this out of 6061 aluminum or some kind of a soft steel on a Haas VF2 machine. So I'm going to change my surface speed to 1000. And I'm going to cha change my feet per tooth to 2000. That should be fairly conservative for this machine. I'm going to hit OK. Say yes, that I want to change these feet to speeds. Then I'm going to go to our quarter inch flat end mill, right click, hit edit. Now this cutter is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to change this value to 800 surface feet and change my feet per tooth to 1000. For our ball end mill, since it only kind of like have to clean up what was left over from the adaptive and the finish tool path, I'm going to change my surface feet to 400 inches per minute, but change my feet per tooth to 2000. Change our three tools. Let's exit out of the tool manager. Now you will notice over in our tree that all our operation has a red exclamation mark. That is because the software is smart enough to know that we changed all the feeds and speeds for the tool. All we have to do is right click on the setup and we can say generate tool paths. Now to check the feeds and speeds, we can go over and click on our contour tool path, right click and we can select machining time. We can see that our machining time is just under five minutes. That gives me the confidence that we can get a good surface finish in a reasonable time for our finishing tool pad. Now, instead of going up to the ribbon bar and redo all our selections for our finishing contour tool pad, I'm just going to right click on the operation, go down to create derived operation, and pick a 3D contour tool pad here. This will assure that all the settings we had from the previous toolpath is covered to this new one. So, we really only have a few things we got to change on this one. First of all, since this is the finishing toolpath, we're going to turn off stock to leave. And then, when it comes to the step over, just for fun, let's change it to 100 thousands. Now, this is probably too fine, it will take too long, but let's just hit OK. See, the cool thing is with Fusion 360, we have the options to go in and explore these kind of things before we actually have to make a decision. So let's right click on that operation and select machining time. Now you will see the machining time is over two hours. Now the surface is going to look fantastic, but I think that we need to keep this whole machining under one hour. So let's close this out. Go back into our 3D contour, select Edit, and change the step over to 5000. Now, when we right click and we select machining time, we will see that we are just below 30 minutes, 
what I think will fit within the surface finish and with the time it's going to take to machine this part. Now we also have to finish the outside perimeter. So I'm going to go from a 3D contour to a 2D contour toolpath. Again, to no one's surprise, first tab is always where we select our tool. And I'm going to go back and select that half inch end mill we used in the beginning and hit OK. When it comes to the geometry selection, I'm going to select the bottom edge of our part because I know on the heights tab, we can always make a change, in this case 600 thousands, just like we had from the adaptive. Hit OK. Now this toolpath comes out great, but I want to show you a little trick. You see here how the lead in lead out comes right on the center of this face. Now, if you have ever had any experience with CNC milling, you know that the cutter gets sucked in right at the lead in lead out entry, leaving a tiny little mark. Here's a neat trick. Let's go back and right click on our contour, select edit. And if we go to the last linking tab and we select entry precision, you can select that edge, hit OK, and now the lead in lead out will start right on that edge, leave a much more professional part. Now, the last tool path we're going to apply to this part is going to make anybody who has to handle this part after it come out of the machine happy. Let's do some deburring. Here, Fusion 360 have a fantastic tool path. It's called 2D Chamfer. Now, the neat thing about this tool path is that it knows what is on the screen. I'm going to select that, go to our tooling library, scroll down to our tutorial ins library, and select a chamfer mill, and hit OK. Now, when it comes to geometry selection, I'm going to select the top of the pocket, to no one's surprise. I'm going to select the outside ads, and then maybe somebody will be interested to see that I'm selecting the end ads of each of the open pockets. Anybody who have ever had any experience with deburring with a CNC mill knows that there's a big risk for gouging. But the cool thing about Fusion 360 is that the 2D chamfer tool knows that there's something there. I'm going to go to the passes tab, change the chamfer width to 20 thousandths, and hit OK. Now you will see on the screen here that the toolpath is short, but the best way to really look at this is probably hitting Setup, go to Simulate, and let's fast forward to the 2D chamfer tool. Now notice how the tool comes in makes a nice chamfer, but stays safely away to hit any of the edges. With this, we only have a few things to do. First, let's go back into our tool library and make sure that we have the right order of our tool. If you right click in this white space, you can select renumber tools. The default is fine here. Hit OK, close out. Now you will see that our tool order is correct. Second thing we want to do is we want to go and create a setup sheet we can bring out to the machine. Now this customizable setup sheet will have all the information an operator wants to know, including all the tooling information and feeds and speeds. Last thing, and maybe most important, is the XEG code to run the part. I'm going to hit the post processing tab and you will see all the different posts that ships with Fusion 360. With that, all we have to do is hit the post button and the code that our CNC machine needs is available for us to go and actually make chips. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you the confidence to go out and test out this part on your CNC mill. If you like the video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hey, be honest and hit the thumbs down. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have an awesome day.